Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. So this one is going to be engineering study tips. Some general tips and then some like specific ones. There's some things that kind of helped me out. I know my grades weren't great. You guys have probably seen my video, but uh, when I did have to buckle down, there were some things that really helped me out. So let's just dive right into it. But first, do me solid. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed, please. And thank you. Let's go. Tip number one. This was the one that probably helped me out the most. And it's do the problems in the textbook and the practice exams. I'll start this off with a little story. So one of my classes called, was Math 300. It was a partial derivatives and boundary value class. One of the toughest class, probably the toughest class that I had in my whole tenure. I went to my professor to get some help with an assignment. He's like, you know, show me your work. And, and I'm like, I, I didn't I didn't start and really know how to start this. And so he was like, uh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm not going to bother. At the time I was like, you know, I'm, I'm bitter. I'm like pissed, like what, what a jerk. But taught me a couple of things. Number one, don't waste my time because there are people that actually try and I'll help them out. And number two, you don't learn if you don't try. Every time that I walked into an exam confident and I walked out confident is when I had done the problems in the textbook. I had done all the practice exams. I had done every difficult problem that I could and I'd managed to figure out how to do it. The exam was gonna be a cakewalk. Skimming your notes, it doesn't work, okay? There's been study after study that have shown this and, and you feel it, right? Like what? how many times, and I've done this too, it's time to cram until you spend four or five hours just rereading your notes, but you know that you're not really studying because it's not that hard. The easier something is, the more you know it's it's not what you need to be doing, right? It's the concept of of resistance. The more resistance you feel towards something, the more that you know that that's what you should be doing. Now, if you're going through practice exams and you can't even start, you don't even understand the concepts, then you have to go back and relearn the concepts. So go back and reread your notes and then quiz yourself and then go and do the rigorous work and do problem and do problem and do practice exam and you'll find that you'll, um, yeah, you'll, you'll ace the exam. Tip number two would be don't cram. It's, a, it's very tempting to cram. I was certainly a crammer myself. The problem is it's it's not a long-term solution. Every, everyone's gonna cram to an extent, but the the the, the real effective way to, to study is to is to space learn. Cramming can have pretty dramatic effects on the exam. It will work in the sense of performance on an exam administered right at the end of cramming. Students get an impression that it really works, but it just works in the short term. It's accompanied by dramatic forgetting rate after that. Researchers have found that losing sleep while pulling an all-nighter also leads to residual academic problems for days after the cramming session. If you're cramming your first exam and then you've you got four more to write over the next week, like that's that's a real problem. This is something pretty neat. It's called the forgetting curve. I just learned about this myself. It kind of shows how your brain retains information or how it doesn't retain. Within one day, you've actually lost like 50%. That's pretty staggering. All these green graphs, these are what happens when you say you, you relearn after a day. Each time you're you're not losing as much. Like these, this curve is way steeper than if you were to, okay, after a day, I'll go back and review those chapters, okay? And then I'll go on to something else. And then after another day, okay, I'll go back and review those chapters. Something that's really helped me out and I never used to do this is setting deadlines. So let, let's take this video for example, right? So I'm filling right now on Saturday and I wanna put this out on Thursday because Putting these out on the weekend is not good. They, they don't get as much engagement. So I'm not going to cram on Tuesday and Wednesday because I have a job and I'm not going to stay up till one in the morning to get this out. I need to set a schedule. At work, you have strict deadlines that your boss is going to set. And if you miss them, as I found out, it's it's not going to be pleasant. So get try and get in the habit of setting these deadlines and keeping yourself accountable. Tip number three is called the Pomodoro technique. Now, honestly, I, I can't live without this technique. I discovered it a few months ago. Basically, you, you study in intervals. You set a timer on your phone for let's say 20 minutes or half an hour, followed by a five minute break, followed by another 30 minute session, and then a five minute break. During that 30 minutes, you just work. You know, look at your phone, you don't browse the internet, nothing. Once you're done, you got that five minutes, that little reward, right? It's, 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 it's nice. It's a little like a delayed gratification. If I'm like in the zone, my alarm goes off after half an hour, I'll hit that snooze. I'm like, ah, let's keep it going. It's discipline, right? It's 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 good to have. Tip number four I have here is to show up prepared to your lectures and you know take take good notes. Okay, here's here, here's what I mean. You you don't really want to go into lectures not knowing where you're at, right? And and it can be tough. A lot of times you end up lost. And even in class when you're just like frantically writing, like that 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 I always found I always found that to be the worst is 
when you just you have no time to do anything except write and you're like okay i'll i'll figure this out later i'll figure out what, what's going on and then it just it just kind of compounds make sure to take an hour and like reread your notes and try and understand what's going on try and internalize those concepts and as far as like taking notes always try and not just copy down what your professor's writing always make your own notes i don't know what it, what it's like nowadays maybe do they post their like powerpoint slides beforehand and then you just kind of write notes you, you kind of make your own notes like that would be kind of ideal you also don't want to be in class and not take any notes so if your professor posts his notes online after you don't want to just kind of go and, and not really like write anything you 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 want you want to write something you want to you want to write your own notes but you also want to try and use as much time as you can to figure out what's going on tip number five and this is kind of a generic one but it's to study with people and it's it's not always easy because you have to find people that are not only close to your level, but that are actually dedicated. I've had experiences where I've studied with you know friends of mine and they're, they're not dedicated and I'm like, screw this, I'm, I'm gonna go and study by myself. You wanna find people that are either a little bit above you, a little bit below you at your level, but most importantly, they actually put the time in. You're, they're not gonna distract you. They're not gonna like leave after an hour. It's good to work with people because it's uh, it's very frustrating when you uh, you know you're you're stuck on something and you don't have a support group. Make sure that you're gonna work hard. Make sure you're not gonna be a burden to anybody. Make sure that you're willing to help if uh, people come to you for help. So yeah, find a find find a good group of guys to uh, or girls to work with. Number six. Uh, this isn't something that I've really seen, but this is just for my own view. Learn the applicability of these concepts. I always found it pretty frustrating when I'm like, why am I learning this? Why am I learning? thermodynamics, why am I learning about partial derivatives? What is the heat equation? A lot of this is just gonna be self-research. Go online, go on YouTube. Brilliant is a good website. They have a lot of modules and of um, you know the the concepts that you that you learn in school and how they're applied and, and sort of practice practice problems. Yeah, I don't know. I, I always found it um, easier to learn when I knew why I'm learning something. Number seven, another generic one, exercise. Okay, exercise. I don't know what it is. It's like magic. You go. If I'm having a shitty day, I go to the gym and I work out, and I get in a sweat and all of a sudden I'm like, boom, I'm happy. Oh my God. Take a break when you're studying, go clear your head, go for a run, go jump some rope, shoot some hoops, feel much better. Your head will be much clearer. It's it's one that's, it's pretty underrated. Definitely go and get in a workout when you can. That's it. I mean, I don't want to get, 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 get two more. A lot of, there's a lot of like techniques out there you guys can probably look up. But the, the one that I would, I would again, highlight the most is doing the practice problems. If you can do, you know, a couple dozen different problems. There's, you're not likely going to find something on the exam that you haven't seen. Make sure again to subscribe to the channel. Let me know if uh, any of these techniques help you or how you guys study, uh, what you guys struggle with. Thanks again for watching. My name is Louis Sam. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. The sky, the sky is falling.